الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد. As we were saying before, our da'wah is to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the NBA, alayhim after salatu wa salam, he says, في كتاب الكريم ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسولا إن عبد الله وجتانب تاقود And we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid those things worship besides Allah. And the taqood is of various types. There are many other things we could be calling the people to. And one is anything which is worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything or anyone worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is pleased with being worshipped. Then they are taqood. They are taqood. So for example, we don't know much about Buddha. But we do know that the people, uh, there are many groups of individuals who cl- classify themselves as, as Buddhist. And they... Some of them worship him and give him divine status. And some of them, they worship the Gohanzen or use it as a means of worship or worship destiny or worship uh, all kind of abstract things and ideas and consciousness. But Allah and his messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, Allah decreed for us and declared for us to worship him and him alone. Ordered us to worship him and him alone. And the messengers, alayhim after salatu salam, that was the message that they were sent with. That's what they were sent with. لَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا And we sent to every nation a messenger. And نَعْبُدُ Allah To worship Allah. Which تَنِبُوا تَغُودٍ And stay away from those things worship besides Allah. So, if a person makes the halal, haram, or the haram, halal, this can also fall into the category of Tagut. So we have to be cautious of that. And if a person dedicates any act of ibadah to other than Allah, then this can also fall into that category. If that which they are worshipping is pleased, if it is something, if it is a, was a human being, or is a human being, or uh, something else, then that can be classified as Tagut. And that's what they warned us against. The NBA. Alayhim afdal salatu wa salam. They called us to worship the Lord of the Creator, the Creator of the heavens and earth. And there are some false cults, not even sects, there are cults who call to worship, they say they have a prophet after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or some cults, they, they refer to themselves as gods. We have them in America. They call each other God. And if you ask one of them, if you're such a God, then why is it you cannot control your bowel movement? Why is it that when you get sickness, you can't heal yourself? Why is it that you will end up in the grave just like those supposed gods before you? And they, they cannot answer that. They can only answer that with some twisted logic and twisted falsehood and philosophy. But Islam purifies us and clarifies it, clarifies things for us to get us away from philosophical arguments and debates and call us back to what is simple, pure, and, and, and clean for us and, and, and wada, and that is to worship Allah alone. But that ayat is so simple that وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا and نَعْبُدُ Why were the Rasul and why were they worship? Why, why were they sent? They were sent to worship Allah. That's not a a difficult concept to understand. That's why Islam is so beautiful and so uh, pure. Because when you won't, if someone is not a Muslim and they become a Muslim, they won't find any mystery when they when they come to Orthodox Islam, to real Islam, based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the understanding of the companions, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. They won't find any mystery. They won't find that, oh, you know, we have such a, an individual, he's called a sheikh, and you have to uh, bow to him. You have to have his picture and you should cry. You should have to have humility before him. Or you should go to so-and-so's grave. You won't find any of that stuff in Islam. But you'll find that in those people who have deviated and innovated in Islam. And those people outside of the fold of Islam. You'll find that their religions are based upon that. Islam is so simple. It just orders you to worship your Lord alone. In accordance with how he legislated it. 
and he legislated it on the tongue actions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's it's very simple. It's very simple. So whenever someone asks you to do something that seems strange, why don't you make uh, you know circumambulate around this person's grave? Things we didn't even do in our times of jahili, in the times when we were on disbelief. We didn't believe in going to the graves and, and praying to the people who are dead in the graves. I never prayed to dead people before. I didn't believe in that. Even I never accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I believed Jesus, I believed in Him, but I didn't believe He was the Son of God, the Son of the One who created all things. I didn't believe that Allah had a son, or a daughter, or a girlfriend. But instead... I just believed in Allah alone. And then Allah guided me after 20 or so, some odd years in my life to Islam. To the purity of Islam, of worshipping Allah alone. And that is the simplicity of the Islamic creed. That you don't have to uh, direct your, your worship, your, your repentance. When you cry, when you know you did something wrong, go to Allah. Allah is always there to listen to you. I might not listen to you. The imam might not listen to you. The sheikh might not listen to you. Nor can they forgive you. Nor can they forgive you. Uh, they can forgive you in this life and say, you know, I forgive you for what you took my right. But they can't gain forgiveness for you. You know, so you don't have to confess to anyone. You hide your sins. Because if you hide your sins, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hidden the sins for you from the people. If Allah has favored you to have your sins hidden from the people, then you better get right with Allah. So you don't have to confess to anyone. That's the beauty of Islam. That's the beauty of staying away from the Tagut. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of Ahl Tawheed. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu astaghfiruka liman la'alamu.